Look, Smithers, it's pitch. It's moving. It's alive. All right, so a run through on what I think of as the <clears throat> brain of the solar heating system here. First thing I'll do is I'll switch it on. So this here is a combination of mains voltage and 24 volts. Um, you could use, you could do it all in 24 volts if you weren't an electrician. I'm an electrician by trade, so I've done it as a mixture of both. You could do it all in 24 volts. Um, yeah, so I'll run over this again, the shaft and that, that'll rotate at the end. Um, and I'll run through what these all do in a second. Firstly though, up here we've got our worm drive motor. Um, its torque is 35 kgs per centimetre. So if you're wondering what that means, if you're looking for a motor, what that means is one centimetre from the, the centre of the shaft. Uh, this motor should be powerful enough to lift 35 kgs on it. To be honest, I think that would probably 35 kgs would probably just break the shaft but that's what it says so that's what I've found when I've googled it up so um, got our worm drive here we've got uh, got our gear here double nuts here just for um, to keep it tight to keep it locked we've got thrust bearings in the bottom here and a waterproof jacket for the top here because I don't want water coming in here and leaking through the shaft into here and obviously thrust bearings up there too they allow it to rotate nicely this is a thrust bearing here um, yeah basically it's just designed to take weight in this direction here it's just got little ball bearings in it basically and it rotates nicely from that direction um, so the motor here is adjustable got wing nuts on it here so you can tweak it up and down if you need to it can also go left and right if you need to if I need to replace it, it should be easy to do that it's 24 volt these are these are all 24 volt cables I've got two limit switches here once again are adjustable with the wing nuts currently they're at about 60 degrees um, onto the controls here one thing that's missing in here at the moment is there will be some cables for the solenoid valves there will be two solenoid valves controlling the water through the solar water heater so uh, you won't see those yet um, so what I've got here is I've, this is actually faulty I need to replace it I've got a contactor here the reason I've got that there is because I want to be able to control this from the greenhouse so that'll get a low voltage signal from the where extra low voltage signal from the greenhouse when I want the system to be operational or if, if the temperature is in a certain uh, temperature range this will kick in it doesn't need to be there this is the photo cell currently the photo cells on the edge the other side of the isolation switch um, coming through this cable here um, so currently it's on so basically the system here thinks it's night time and uh, this has reset itself back to the night time position which is this angle here where the sun rises I'll run I'll, I'll, I'll do a demo in a few minutes um, this here is a normally open, normally closed relay. I needed that just so that I can differentiate between operating the valves in the daytime and the nighttime. Um, in the daytime, the valves are controlled by the temperature, and obviously the timer controls the motor in the day, but at nighttime, the photo cell controls the valves. Um, so that's all now. Basically, you've got temperature relay, timer relay. This timer relay has Quite a few different settings and functions you can use. I'm just going to turn have it turn on after five or six hours, which is halfway through the day. So it'll start in the morning facing the sun, and then when the sun moves around, say five hours later, it'll rotate to that direction. I could make it time it with an extra relay. Um, I could make it so that the timer slowly follows the sun. There's some other settings I could do. You could make this thing. You could improve on this. Um, so I'll go, go through for demo. I've got the timer off at the moment. Normally that would be set to a certain set, setting, as I say. I'll leave that off. And what I'll do is we're, we're going to... I'll turn this off. And basically in the morning when the sun goes down, this will come off when it's on auto. Right. So now I've got power to the temperature. So temperature relay timer. 
So obviously the solenoid valves won't allow water through until the temperature is correct um, and until the timer, the, time, the motor won't rotate that until the timer tells it to. So let's just say five hours have gone by and I'll flick that timer on. So as you can see, when the drive motor kicks in and slowly this will rotate round until it hits. I'll leave that running and I'll speed it up. Yep, so it'll stop there, catching the sun for the rest of the day. And then once again at the end of the day, when it gets dark, it'll work its way all the way back to the start and turn off when it hits that limit switch. So it's pretty simple really. Um, not sure if I said it or not, but stainless steel cover, second hand, IP rated. Um, no water should get in here. Yep, so I'll isolate that and we'll show you the solar water heater. So the solar water heater is all done now. It's just a matter of mounting it on top. Um, I could automate the angle of this, but this angle is good for winter. I won't be using it in summer anyway. And as you can see, it's all ready to go basically. So in the next week or so, I'm hoping to get it all out there and get it all set up. Get a power supply out there and yeah. Um, I still have to make the compost heater, so I have to put the pipes in, insulate the pipes, uh, set up a tank in the greenhouse and all the rest of it, so I'm still a wee way away, but I'll, uh, I'll keep updating as I go.